When an animal ends up in a different part of the world than it evolved in, all kinds of chaos can reign in that habitat. Non-native species are species that have been moved from their place of origin over to a foreign range. When these non-native species start to cause negative impact on our environment, our economy or on human health, they start to be considered as invasive species. In the UK, around 10% of our non-native species are invasive. This video is going to introduce you to six non-native animal species that you can find in the UK, which also happen to be found in the USA. The first three species are foreign to both countries, whereas the final three species are foreign to the UK, but not to the USA. The Harlequin ladybird is native to Central and East Asia, but has gone on to conquer the globe. It first became established accidentally in the UK in 2004 and was quickly categorised as invasive due to evidence that it is causing declines in at least seven of our native ladybird species. As voracious predators, Harlequin ladybirds were deliberately introduced in the early 1990s in the USA as a form of biological pest control. The plan was to use them to protect pecan and apple harvests. Unfortunately, this plan backfired and the ladybirds have not only caused declines in the aphid pest species, but also in a range of other invertebrates in both locations. Continued accidental reintroductions by shipping companies as they're transported across the sea means that harlequin ladybird populations have only been increasing. Harlequin ladybirds are able to disperse rapidly by long distance flights and an ability to survive transport by humans. They also have a high reproductive capacity, resistant to many of the threats facing native ladybird species and are a very adaptable species to new environments. All of these factors have helped the species establish and maintain itself in new locations. With the unforeseen impact that introducing harlequin ladybirds has had on our native ladybirds, this species acts as a warning sign about the unintended consequences that can happen as a result of deliberately introducing a foreign species. Brown hares are native to mainland Europe and interestingly are considered invasive in the USA but not in the UK. In the USA, this species established itself in 1912 after individuals escaped from a Canadian fur farm. This population was then bolstered by the introduction of hares as a game animal that were then turned loose in New York. They have a much longer history in the UK, having long been mistaken for a native species, but instead likely being introduced here around 2,500 years ago. It is perhaps these histories that have hares seen differently in the different locations. Evidence suggests that hares originally introduced to the UK were associated with a goddess and revered. Any damage that they may have done initially to the local environment would likely not have been attributed to the hares. And by this point, they've been in the UK for so long that our native species are used to their presence. Meanwhile, in the USA, they've been around for a relatively short period of time and have already been noted for damaging young fruit trees during the winter. Brown hares are mostly solitary and they only really come together for two reasons. The first is when it's winter time and they gather together for some warmth. The second is during the breeding season where they'll come together for courtship. You can usually spot brown hares in open stretches of land, like in farmlands, where they'll dig a shallow depression in the earth and then crouch there to hide from predators. Even in places where they aren't native, hares are considered a helpful species for the survival of predators. In the UK, their main predator is our native red fox, while in the USA it is foxes, coyotes and lynx. They're also known to help boost the survival of large birds of prey. However, humans could also pose a threat. Due to being a non-native game species, they're actually the only game species in the UK that can be shot regardless of the time of year. The signal crayfish is native to rivers and lakes on the western side of the United States, but has become the most widespread non-native crayfish in Europe and is listed as one of the three most invasive crayfish species worldwide. It was introduced to the UK to be farmed for food, but managed to escape and now occupies 80% of English and Welsh rivers. Like with many invasive species, the signal crayfish was originally brought here with good intentions, but is now wreaking havoc on our ecosystem. The white-clawed crayfish is the only crayfish native to the UK. It has undergone serious declines since the introduction of the signal crayfish. Signal crayfish outcomplete white-clawed crayfish for food and habitat, as well as predating on them. They also carry the crayfish plague, which is fatal to our native crayfish species. Signal crayfish don't only affect our native crayfish, they also burrow into our riverbanks, creating a network of tunnels that are prone to collapse. This increases the rate of flooding around rivers and the polluting silt load within them. Signal crayfish also eat fish eggs and outcompete adult fish for habitats, which has an impact on our fisheries. Unfortunately, it's difficult to control the spread of signal crayfish. Traps might sound like a good idea, but they actually drown our native otters. 
They also let some signal crayfish get transported into new rivers when they stow away within the traps. Not only this, but by removing the larger individuals by trapping them, the young signal crayfish have much less competition, so in the following year the result is a population boom. For now, the best ways we have to control them is through disinfection of equipment and attempting to prevent their spread. Moving from the west to the east of the USA, our next species is the American bullfrog, native to the margins of lakes and streams of eastern USA. These bullfrogs are huge compared to native UK frogs, with a large eardrum and a skin fold that runs down from their eye to their flank. They were originally brought over here for the pet trade, but when owners decided to release the unwanted tadpoles in the 1990s, they began to breed in the wild. Although American bullfrogs are rare to see here, they're highly invasive and so sightings of them should be reported immediately. Bullfrogs pose a big threat to our native amphibians. Their large size means they are less susceptible to predation, while their high mobility allows them to spread easily. They reproduce in large numbers and don't have a specialised diet, which lets them survive in many situations that our native amphibians couldn't. American bullfrogs eat our native amphibians and also a range of our other animals. They will eat our native fish, reptiles, amphibians, water birds and small mammals. Not only that, but once their populations have established, they will compete with our native birds, reptiles, amphibians and fish for food sources and habitats. In areas where they continue to exist alongside our amphibians, they can spread the citrid fungus, which causes serious disease in our native species. Their tadpoles also cause problems, feeding so much on algae that the amount of energy within rivers is reduced and nutrient cycling breaks down. Because of all these problems, it's illegal to release an American bullfrog in the UK, even within your own private garden. Grey squirrels are native to eastern North American woodlands, but are a common sight across the UK. They were shipped over in the 1890s at the request of wealthy landowners and quickly established themselves as an invasive species. Twelve grey squirrels were sent to Ireland as a wedding present and then escaped, with all Irish grey squirrels able to trace their origins back to those original twelve animals. The most well-known impact of grey squirrels in the UK is the decline of red squirrels. Where grey squirrels show up, any red squirrels tend to disappear within 15 years. Grey squirrels carry the squirrel pox virus, which our red squirrel didn't evolve alongside and so has no natural defences against. They also outcompete red squirrels for food, as they eat seeds and nuts before they are ripe enough for our red squirrels to eat them. They can live easily in conditions where red squirrels struggle, such as in parks and gardens. All of this means that by now there are almost 3 million grey squirrels in the UK, and less than 300,000 reds. Our native red squirrels are only hanging on in a few locations where greys haven't yet established. Grey squirrels are having a much greater impact on UK woodlands than just reducing red squirrel populations. The high densities that grey squirrels live in harms our nesting birds, which evolved alongside squirrels in much lower densities. Where grey squirrels exist in the UK, our bird fledging rates are reduced by an average of 15%. Even the trees themselves are harmed by grey squirrels, with the bark stripping costing the UK timber industry around £14 million a year. Although the complete removal of grey squirrels would be an ideal solution, we don't have the resources to do it. At the moment, it's up to individuals to control populations on their own land. Any grey squirrels that enter your house or end up in traps must either be given to a rescue or humanely euthanised because releasing them back into the wild is illegal. The final species in this video is the American mink, native as the name suggests to North America but invasive in the UK. While they fit neatly into the North American ecosystem, predating on small mammals or birds and being eaten by larger predators, they have few natural controls in the UK. The mink was first brought over to the UK in 1929 to be farmed for its fur. A combination of deliberate release attempts and also escapes meant they managed to establish itself in the wild. The first breeding records occurred in the 1950s, and since then it's managed to establish itself widespread. American minks tend to be found around waterways where they hunt on other mammals. This is bad news for our native water bowl. While water voles and otters evolved to live in balance in the UK, the voles have little defence against mink. Smaller and slimmer than an otter, the mink is able to enter water vole burrows and eat them in their traditionally safe dens. Over the 1960s and 70s, water vole populations declined so quickly that they were on fast track to become extinct here. Water voles are now endangered in the UK. The recent reintroduction of otters across much of the waterways that they were once part of seems to be reducing mink numbers and so could be having positive impacts on water vole populations. In the last 20 years, mink numbers have fallen by up to 45%. 
It's too early to attribute that to otters, but scientists expect that the decline of another of their prey species, rabbits, could be the cause of this. Regardless of which species was introduced, or why it was introduced, there are always unintended consequences. In a globally connected world, it's becoming increasingly common to see species occurring in a habitat that they would never have naturally found their way to. The question that we must ask as conservationists is do we put our time and resources into moving these non-native species out of the area, or do we learn to live with the new ecosystems that we're creating? If you want to support me in continuing to create these free educational videos, then check out my new Patreon page. I have five different monthly support tiers to choose from, ranging from just £2 up to the higher tiers where you can vote for video topics, have your name credited at the end of each video, receive personalised art of any UK species, and get one-on-one -on -one consultation calls with me on any nature-related topic of your choice. Subscribe to Ferroforest to keep learning about UK nature.